good. How's everything going with your uh, your new place there? So I'm out of the bathroom. The last mm -hmm. we talked, we were in the bathroom. So right now, I'm in the house. We have all just like temporary furniture. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is good. How's this sound? It sounds great. A little, it uh, does? Yeah, a little, um, you know, a little bit of reverb, a little bit of echo because the walls are empty. But once that, you know, we'll be oh, in so your... Here's uh, my camera. Hello, camera. It's a little echoey, right? Yeah, but that's because your walls are empty, so... And plus, you'll have a space soon dedicated for this, so it'll sound great. Should I go to a different place where it's not so echoey? No, no, it actually sounds way better than it did in the bathroom, so you're good. The bathroom was crazy. Yeah. The bathroom was a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I was in full-blown panic attack. I was, I was running my wife like, D! Do we have Wi-Fi? I'm like, what's the code? I'm, I'm gonna do podcasts in like three weeks. Like, <laughs> where am I gonna do it? I, I'll do it in the bathroom. Don't do it in the bathroom, Jim, for crying out loud. Like, who cares? Don't, who cares? I just need a place. Yeah, it was, it's still a little, it's still a little chaotic, but um, yeah. that's why today is gonna be a perfect day for me. So let me explain to everyone what today is. Mike has found some uh, old footage stuff. And Liz, a lot of this comes from the Patreon users. The Patreon people are like, hey, why don't you have Vintage Brewer Day? What, what does that mean? And I guess the clip you showed, Mike, I don't know if it was the last podcast or two podcasts ago, you apparently showed a clip, and I had a dangling cross earring. I had a mullet. Oh, that yeah, was, was like, at, uh, yeah, Bonkers. That was with uh, Angel Wolf. Right, with Lou Angel Wolf. Right, right, yep. right. So the, so the podcast of Lou Angel Wolf. Um, and people are like, whoa, we need to see more of that. So I've been talking to this one guy on Patreon, and he's like, Jim, all this old stuff, the stuff with your dad, the stuff with you, you say you got all the stand-up film, why don't you just show it on Patreon and do old stuff, even if you're embarrassed by it. And then we started, which me and you talked about in the very beginning when we were thinking about doing this whole podcast. Yeah. So... Today is finally Vintage Brew Day. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have some people on. Um, they're friends. They're people that will know this. We're going to – I'm sure I'm going to be very humbled, embarrassed by some of the stuff I'm going to see. I did not see some of the stuff that Mike has chosen for today. I do know we need um, – our, our good friends part of this. So just a little history. Technically, I started doing stand-up comedy. You know, I dabbled with it when I was 16, and the, but really when I was 18. Um, and then after 18 years old, look at the bags under my eyes. Good God. What? This is... Wow. Brewer, you need a... What a, what a beautiful backdrop, too. What do I got, a receipt? What a very professional. We got to get this studio hooked up, Mike. I'm a, I'm a mess right now. Uh, um, I'll hook you up, man. Don't worry about that. So, oh, my God. He's bad. Do I always look this terrible with the bags? I look like the my, under my eyes are taking a trip. It's just like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to go into your next gig. We're already packed and ready. Let me get that thing out of the way. So I started doing stand-up um, going, you know, 1989 is like, you know, this is it. I'm doing it, mom and dad. And that's when I started filming things on those big VHS tapes. And so we're going to show some stuff today. Do you know how far back we go today, Mike? Um, like, I mean, like I, said, I hit a yeah. box that was labeled 89 to 92. So oh, we're, okay. we're going at least that far back. Okay, so let's bring on a friend of mine who, before I even bring him on, this guy's like a brother to me. Um, I met him in the, I think, 95-ish, somewhere on there, 95. Saw him perform stand-up at the comic strip in New York, and he made me laugh. He made me laugh. He was a Long Island guy. He reminded me a lot of myself at where he was at and all that. And we just, we hit it off instantly. And he's been like a brother ever since. We've, we've been on an incredible journey. 
We used to do a radio show together. Um, he was, he was, he was the anchor to my, to my radio show. It was Brewer Unleashed, but he was, he just brought, he brought everything to the table. And I think he's one of the most brilliant writers out there. And I always thought when this guy starts writing films and TV, look out. And he showed a little bit of that when he was on the radio show. And now he does, um, I mean, he got me hooked up for Kevin Could Wait uh, when I did that. He's writing TV shows now. He does a, um, he does a uh, podcast with superstar Sebastian Maniscalco. And he's just, I consider him more like a brother. So this is Pete Corriello. You're going to bring Pete in here. Jimmy B! <laughs> What's up, bro? How you doing? I'm good. I'm in my... Um, I know. I heard the whole beginning, man. I heard... I mean, after all these years, you're still like... Why were you going to do it in the bathroom? What was the purpose of that? Because, well... When I did it in the bathroom, it was because D was here and Dory was here. So D's on the phone pacing in the kitchen. Uh, Dory's, you know, right. she, I don't know right who she's you. FaceTiming and Snapchatting. So I have this big kitchen. It echoes because there's no rugs. So I'm like, hey, D, hey, D, hey, D. I'm like, oh, shit, I can't have this. Yeah. So I... I end up in the toilet, and that's and I get, close all right, to I, the Wi-Fi. You know, I get it because isn't it weird how, like, you know what you're saying, your wife can go and obviously listen to the show, so can your daughter, and that's fine. And anyone can listen to it that wants to, but I don't want them to hear it when I'm saying it. It's the weirdest thing, you know what I'm saying? It just messes me up knowing you're back there judging what I'm saying. Judge it later. Let me say it with all my fury <laughs> now, right? <laughs> so that's why you go to the bathroom. Why are you doing it in the bathroom? Because you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, you, you, Pete nailed it. Pete nailed it. Yeah. It's not just I want privacy. It's exactly what he said. I can't tell you how many times. I mean, you would do the show. And I'd have D going, um, why are you guys talking about that? Like, why are you listening? Right. Why are you right. listening? Exactly. We, we figure things out in conversation. We don't just go, hey, that's the way we are. We talk and we go, oh, maybe we shouldn't have said that. But at least we put – so if I tell you – now, yeah. you know my wife. My wife is, you know, the Lord, Jesus. So she'll always go, make sure you're putting out the right message every time. Okay, okay. So – you know, once in a while, I think it was talking last week and we're talking whatever, conspiracy stuff with Shaka. Go fit. You know, I don't know if it's funny. Yeah. Shaka. Yeah. So she just bops her head in and goes, just like that. And I know right there she's going, is G, you know, are you staying on track with this conversation? Right. Like, I don't. Right. I should do all my. <laughs> I should do all the podcasts. You know what? I might be the only guy that would do. I think I might do all the podcasts from the toilet. That's not a bad idea. I should make one of my <laughs> yeah. toilets a studio for literally that reason. I don't want anyone to hear me. It's the only place I can escape. Absolutely. Dude. Absolutely. No, that's so funny. Yeah. All right. When you lean forward, I lose you for a second. So I don't want you to. Oh, you do? Like I'm not. You know, yeah. It's weird. Okay. I don't know. Mike, is that is better? Mine? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. It's most likely it me. It's most all likely right. me. Right. You're in um, the new house, baby, right? It's all new. You loving it? I am loving it. I'm just I'm not I'm not settled yet. You know, like we when we moved here, we, we got rid of all our furniture. We have no furniture. Okay? So when we got here and everyone said, Oh, you know, you better start ordering furniture. It takes like seven, eight months. I'm like, yeah, yeah, right, don't worry right. about it. Well, we got a lot of Ikea stuff in here, a lot of fold-up <laughs> chairs. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, this comes yeah, in, yeah. yeah, bed comes in June, uh, patio furniture. If you, 
So yeah. we're in, but not not a hundred percent settled, if that makes sense. Got you. Got you. Yeah, yeah. I was telling Jackie a story about you the other day going down memory lane. You were on Saturday for about a year now, and you know, you you were a road comic, so now you were making scratch, you were headlining, and my it was my bachelor party. And when we went to my oh. bachelor party, we were at this little cabin. And it was so funny because how, how like, you know, you were successful now. And it was the start of, because you brought furniture. We all needed some lawn chairs. Or we had lawn chairs and shit. And you didn't have any. And we went to Walmart to get other stuff. And you got, like, a really nice lawn chair. You got a fucking sleeping bag. <laughs> you, got, like, you got, like, $250 worth of shit. And then the day we left, two days later, the campsite we go bro what do you want with your stuff and you go take it man <laughs> like you let us have it and we're like oh shit he's got that snl cash now baby <laughs> and it's been off to the races ever since so you know you guys will get the furniture congrats on the new, congrats on the new place and the only other story i want to say to start this thing off yeah. is uh to go down memory lane is speaking of your old your old beautiful house in jersey uh, I love telling the story. When you first bought that house in Jersey, I came out to visit, and we're out on your porch, and this is back when you used to smoke, and, and I still do, and we were smoking a, a joint. And I'll yeah. never forget. I'll never forget. We're sharing it on the porch, and your porch is very far back from the road as it is. And as we're talking, a car came by. If, you know, it's a slow, it's a quiet street, so, you know, this car comes by a couple times, and I'm go, <laughs> you go, yeah, man, I'm going to get an iron gate that goes around the whole front of the house and wraps around. I'm not going to take a hit. I go, I go, relax, you got your gate. What are you, Jack Nicholson? I don't think you need a gate yet. And then the car comes by and stops at that moment, right? You have to join your hand. Kid gets out and he looks. He goes, fucking Jim Brewer. They told me you lived here. I didn't believe it. And he starts marching up your drive. You hand me the joint. You go, hold it, hold it. And then you meet him so nice. And you go, uh, Hammer, Hammer, listen, you can't just come on the property, you know? And then you walk back over to me and I go, bro, you got to get the fucking iron gate. <laughs> right away. <laughs> so, well, I tell everyone, too. I said it on a couple of podcasts ago. Uh, I was on with this guy, Lou Angel Wolf. <clears throat> and I told the time where you came out to the house because you, you were concerned about D. You know, she found her faith, and you're like, bro, oh, this, yeah. this yeah. could be a cult, man. Yeah. And, yeah. You, so I go, and you were, you, were, you, were, you were really concerned. And so was I. So was I. Oh, be a dude, liar. She had, I said, dude. She like wanted me to try and figure out what made Osama bin Laden do what he did. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to get me to leave the house? Holy shit! No, you went like this. Wait, no, no, no. You went like this. You, <laughs> you were sitting in the kitchen, and you go, you, you go, D. <laughs> you go, D. Let me ask you something. You know, your head's bopping. You go. You don't hate nothing. It's just no. I everything's love. You don't hate anybody. It's just no. I I have a hard time finding any type of hate. And you, which you classic the way you point, you're like, you're telling me <laughs> what, how? What if you said what if Osama bin Laden was right here in your kitchen? Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Tell me you don't hate him. And she goes, I don't know him. And you go, she's in a cult, brewer. She's in a cult. <laughs> and you, you had to leave the house and have a cigarette. And just re oh. I don't think I ever laughed oh, so man. hard in my entire life. That was <laughs> no sitcom can ever write that scene. It was. I know. Oh, the way it should have ended was so she funny. said, I don't know him. I should have been like, well, let me tell you what he's been up to lately. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you a little about him. So is Gene waiting? I know he's coming on too. His, uh, his uh, reading glasses are probably fogging up, waiting to get on right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's so on. Do we have Gene? I, I thought Mike said we did. Oh, oh my God. 
You're like the um, the ghost marauder over there. Thank you. <laughs> I can't see shit, man. Even this close, I can't see. I'm going blind. <laughs> Are those prescription glasses? Nah, nah they're just cheetahs. They're just cheetahs. They're just cheetahs. Yeah. So for everyone that knows me, Gene, go way, way, way back. 80s and then some. Um, <laughs> if you ever came to see me at the Paramount, Gene and my friend Phil were at every single show. Uh, those of you on Patreon would know Gene because he was in a lot of the pre-shows leading up to the concert and all that jazz. And so um, Gene also really never filters himself. So I Am I supposed to? No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. So that's why. So today we're going to play some clips and whatever we think, we could laugh at, we could make fun of them. I, whatever happens, happens. Gene. Yes, sir. How are things about you? Good. How are you? How are you doing? Good. Yeah, you're working. You're, you're... Hey, you're a little slow because of the winter, but uh, we're, we're hanging in there. All I'm right. a construction, so that's why. The household's good? Yeah, Everybody yeah, everybody's fine. It? It's All their right. birthdays next, uh, this Friday. Whose birthday? Both of them. They're both born on the same day, my wife and my daughter. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I said, you know, you know, don't spread it around. Keep it one day so I can remember it, you know. For, mostly for me, not for them, you know what I mean? Gee, I told her, you hold on to that baby until your birthday, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you squirt that little bastard out on a day. Wow. Uh, that's awesome. Was it even... We're Tight, like did it get to like eleven fifty seven p.m. And no, like, oh, actually, my <laughs> my daughter was like uh, uh, two and a half weeks late. She ran out of like amniotic fluid, so they were like, "She's got to come today." So my in laws come down. They got a birthday cake, and meanwhile, it was like a horror show. Every nurse and uh, doctor, it, like, and people that shouldn't have really been in the room because they were trying to teach them. So they're in there and they got like not not a poker face. I'm like, get this woman out of here. She looks like, you know, something bad's gonna happen and she's horrified. <laughs> it's fucking me up. Please get her out of here. <laughs> this totally lady's bedside man is a fucking Yeah, this one is not gonna make it. I'm gonna if I can do do a grade later, I'm gonna give her like a three out of ten. But I want you, yeah. even if I'm on a plane, I want my flight attendant smiling right up yeah. until I hit the mountain. Like, right exactly. up Exactly. I don't care. If, <laughs> I, you could be scared shitless, but give me the confidence that you, at least you think you know what you're doing. Keep handing out the peanuts, whatever it is. Keep the show rolling. Don't let me know that something's bad, because I pick up on that shit right away. Oh, no, we're fucked, because this she's already freaking out. We're going down, and it ain't, and it ain't all good. Do you think there was anyone on the Titanic right up until the water coming over the deck going, well, well, the band's still playing. We got it. Yeah, the band's. It's, everything's okay. Yo, can I get a drink over here? I mean, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. Oh, that's great, man. We're talking, you know, we're talking about old stuff. Remember what, the last time we saw Pete up up in uh, Buffalo here? When we were playing that oh, game? Yeah, yeah. We were playing baseball with no bat. <laughs> in the ball oh. and we were beating and we were having a blast yelling and screaming and everything and then the the catering was right behind it so we go to eat the catering like and uh we, we started talking about and the guy that was slicing up the carving station goes yeah i heard you guys you guys are hilarious <laughs> we had no idea that they could hear us in the other room <laughs> yeah what Gene, what gene's leaving out is this is this is backstage metallica <laughs> So, we, the, you know, they give me a room, and now here's here's what's, now me and Pete known each other forever. Uh, me and Gene know each other forever. We're backstage, Metallica, and what do we choose to do? We're gonna compete against each other playing <laughs> some Nerf ball, just so we can talk about who kicked. Who's we were ass. actually playing positions, right. running bases. It was it was retarded. It was, <laughs> The only thing, like, it, it should have been like a Ritalin commercial because, like, these people need to be on Ritalin because they're just too much energy and too excited. Right. <laughs> the saddest part is I had some way to go because, you know, I lived in Buffalo. I yeah, it was like in dress show. clothes. I, I'm the only guy. I went to the arena just, just to play Nerf before the Metallica concert. I'm the only one who left. The whole stadium's looking over going, is this fucking guy leaving? They're about to come on. I just came for the Nerf. <laughs> Good for the nerf, kid. Yeah. Um, so this is a, I think Mike 
we should play a clip. Yeah, let's um, jump right into it. Do you have a particular one? Um, are, are we going to play the one with Pete in it first? Uh, yeah, we can play that one. That's no problem. I okay, got that Pete, one do you up. even know what he's going to play right now? No clue, man. Okay. I don't have a clue either. He says this is a clip with me and you in it. Let, let, let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold wait, on, wait, hold wait, on. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, guys, back then, I wasn't as woke as I am now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go back to sleep. No. <laughs> Pete, I have will tell been, you this. Have these been vetted, Mike? Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, because no, America can't get uh, Pete canceled. America can't lose Pete. Listen, Pete. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, you can't I don't cancel Pete. what's not on, right, Gene? <laughs> <laughs> I, Pete, I can assure you, if mm -hmm. I'm involved, I don't need any aggravation either. And this is all. You know, I went to your. He brings enough heat on himself. You put, you put the phone right to your face. If you really knew who was running, how yeah. You if you, but then you don't tell me. What the fuck? It's a cliffhanger. <laughs> That's what everybody always does. They're like, if you knew really what happened at the World Trade, well, then if you know, then tell me. Why? You know? <laughs> oh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. It's a cliffhanger. Drew's like, I don't need anything either. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. No, but what do you think I'm gonna? It's like, it's like a gang. You think I'm gonna put out specific names and specific things? And next thing you know, like, hey, you got this. Um, is this? Are you a brewer? That we got this. <laughs> <laughs> the helicopters right, are right. flying around the house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, honey, you know that helicopter's no. been there a long time. <laughs> so you, oh so my you god! Say, Thanks no for the brewer, water. <laughs> but then what you're telling me is, they know you know. But they're not going to kill you. No, you know that I know that you, you know, know that I know. You know I know. <laughs> but I ain't going to say nothing because I am not that You know I can say something, out. but I'm not saying nothing. You know. And they know. <laughs> you know. They know. You know. <laughs> they know that I know what's going on. But they already know. So it doesn't you know. matter what I know because they all know. So Just let's, let's forget about it, right? You know that I know, though. <laughs> 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 Take it for what it's worth. Take right. it for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, we're gonna, hey, Pete, we're gonna fill, we're gonna fit him for a tinfoil hat real soon. Don't worry about it. Hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> if I, it's been very interesting who reaches out to me and and for what reasons. And Pete, that's a conversation not on the podcast. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Where I was like. Wait a minute. What did you just say? What did you just text? What? Um, it's yeah, it's been quite a and then there's like, oh wow. dude, I had no clue. Wow, thanks. Um <laughs> anyway, hey, that's all part all of the right. bunker. See, yeah, here's yeah. here's the thing. What you saw, Pete, that's part yeah. of a whole one hour, and the whole thing is called the bunker. These are conspiracy theories. You can, we don't, we're not saying they're true. We're not right. saying they're false. We're just saying that these are things they, we heard. Yeah, so what yeah. you saw, what so many other people saw was just one part of the clip, you know? And that's mm -hmm. a whole big, oh, not, but it, it gets enough trigger. <laughs> you know, there are people right now going, Jim, tell us about the bodies. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't know. So is it true that Walt Disney and I don't know about Walt Disney? <laughs> um, so you just yeah. Throw it, I throw it out there and then I walk away. Come on. Yeah, well, you you stir the pot and watch, you know, watch it go off. Yeah, who wants to have some sauce? Is this, is this gluten free? Are we allowed, you know. then, <laughs> then you have a garden someday of crazy boys all over, right? You go, there's my, uh, there's my world, uh, the World Trade Center tree. This is my, yeah, right? Look at them grow. Look at them. Exactly. This is my World Trade Center, which, you know, we've talked about that. We're not going to get into that. I have views. Some people bothered by it. We, we all have different views. Right. But, but anyway, that's what that day is for. That's what that uh, podcast is. So... Hey. I can assure, back to I can assure you, 
th- whatever Mike's going to play, I made it Sounds very, good. I made it very clear to him. Hey, listen, man, I, 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 I need to know a hundred percent because right. people got lives, have, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. we, we filmed before you were allowed, you know, there was social media. Politically so. correctness. Correct. <laughs> I feel like everyone in the whole world has had some video out there where they're like, "Ooh, boy!" Yeah, oh, I don't know if that should get oh, out. That's nowhere. Like you know, like something I remember doing in high school or something where they're like, "Ooh, I hope that didn't, you know, last." You know how you know, know how you sure those don't come out? Never get famous and never become a politician. It'll never come out. Because <laughs> then you have to look over your shoulder constantly. Oh, how 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 much heat am I putting on myself? Yeah. Bro, if That's I ever, come out. If I ever just ran for mayor, I would take out all my most dark, <laughs> d- dark stuff, videos you had no clue exist about me, and I'd just play them on a 24-hour reel and go, This is right, me. Now that that's out of the way, here's how I plan on running the city. All right, so now you got no dirt on me. <laughs> <laughs> this is me, four years oh, old, shit. checking out my butthole in a full-length mirror. I didn't know what was going on. I'm wearing pantyhose at 14. Mom, put the camera down. Look at him. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. Yes, that's pantyhose I'm wearing. I didn't know which direction <laughs> I was going. Dude, I, did, I was 14. Now, let's talk about the real issues. Boom. Um, all right, let's, let's play this clip. What do you got, Mike? All right, here we go. Hey, thanks for letting me hang out at the big audition with Pete, don't worry about it. Do me a favor, though. If anyone asks, tell him the last guy ate all them donuts. I said help yourself, so I did. <laughs> hey, listen, tell me how this sounds, all right? Be for hoya, boom, boom. Be for oh hoya, God. boom, boom. It's more than meat, oh it's God. beef. <laughs> Would you write that yourself? Uh, yeah, it's commercial. Wouldn't make me want to eat this stuff, man. Dude, here's what you should do. <laughs> you gotta go big, get nuts, go crazy, brewerize it. You think? They'll love it, man. Go big. All right, like uh, beef up, beef up. How old are you? Old enough to know that's dog food. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow, man. That was the first one, yep. (laughs) What was that for? Great question, Gene. Um, So, that was a pilot. And I'm trying to remember how that went about. Do you do you remember how that went about, Pete? I, I, Hell yeah! I, I mean, like you 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 were coming off Saturday Night Live, and everybody wanted to make yeah. a sitcom with you, and you you made the rounds. You chose Fox, and then you know you chose your show your team, your showrunner, and then as far as me auditioning, you know the character was written based on the way I talk. So you were oh really my god, you're guy. bringing you, so much back now. Yeah, and you were trying real hard to help me get the part. And then remember, it came down. You, oh gosh, I go. Two weeks before the audition, you guys flew me out, and you said, "If you get the part, you pay me back." And you flew me out to, uh, uh, out west LA. to practice yeah. with with a with a pra- acting coach with the with the casting director. I practiced with her over and over and over because everyone was trying to get me to part. Uh and then you even said when I it got down to me and another guy and we had to test in front of the entire network. And I'm so like not a real actor that like I have my ear to the door listening to the other guy and I'm like, oh, he's fucking killing, you know. And then, when I, <laughs> and then when I went in, it went really great. We practiced really hard and it was my voice. So I delivered it differently than the other guy. And you said when I left, they, they all agreed, let's give it to Pete, meaning me. Uh, and then you go, that's my friend that I wanted you guys to go with and then the guy just goes well i yeah i guess we did then like he didn't even know any of that so you tried really hard to get me that wow one experience okay so there's a lot of this is all coming back to me now so i went to i went to yeah we went out i pitched a show we were best friends 
Did I just get married or something? I don't you even were married, remember. But you, didn't have, you were married. You were working at Sears. Uh, Sears. Yeah, you were right. trying to be a musician, I think, because of the singing. Dude, I met Will Smith. Remember, there was one of the people I pitched to. Will Smith came in the room. I was like, "Whoa!" And he sat down. And he started telling me about um, this be cool idea, man. Like this becomes your your place where you know you create music and you always go to the music department. We'll give them a music department. You're always in there clowning around. I was like, holy shoot! And I and we ended up going with Fox. And then we went with Fox, just like you said. I went. I'm gonna write exactly the way Corielli speaks. And there's no way they'll ever know. Like they'll. Th It'll be tailor made for Pete. Like, there's no way. Because I felt it, it was just such a funny chemistry and blah, blah, blah. I hate it. So, with that said, I remember it now. You'd come out, we'd rehearse, and I didn't tell them. And there was the other guy before the test, they wanted the other guy. There was one girl that really wanted the other guy. And I said, hey, man, I, I'm not going to – at the end of the day, you're the one – let, but let's – so the test came, and they were all convinced the other guy was yeah. going to have it. And you crushed it. And, yeah, you left, and that, I was so excited because – Yeah, like, you were awesome. You hooked me they, up. They were like, the chemistry, Thanks. blah, blah, blah. Now, <laughs> here's the funny part. There, there was a, there was, didn't, didn't we go out or something and, or, or like stayed out too late or it, it didn't, wasn't there some type of drinking night or something like that? I can't, I can't freaking remember. I feel like something happened during that that was belly laughing funny, but off the screen. Does anything come to you or no? Mm, I remember. I remember going to the, that one popular club that you uh, – The Mondrian? Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Wait a minute. A that's when – that's when we saw like – oh, wait a minute. Is that the place where I go like this? I go, now, Pete, okay, you're going to see a lot of Hollywood bananas here. I mean, d don't, don't bug out, but there's going to be a lot of – and I said, and what – you know, just, just – try to be cool and all that jazz. And we were, we went there and you, you saw all these, whatever. And one guy saw Pauly Shore. Remember we saw Pauly Shore? Oh, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he, he came at me a little bit. Came at me a little He's like, oh, you copying my stuff? And I went, what are you, what are you talking about? He goes, I oh, did MTV. Right. I that. He goes, I did MTV. You did MTV. I went, yeah, but you're like, you know, yours. Yeah. Is, and then he goes, I was like doing characters and you were doing <laughs> He goes, he goes, I wore a dress. You put on a dress. I'm like, dude, you think we're the only ones that ever, like, you think you're the first guy to put on? So then, yeah, then I started right. pushing back like, dude, I'm not going to listen to Paulie Shore telling me. And, the and then, Lisa. <laughs> yeah. And then, but then he was, and then we came to understanding we were cool. I'm like, dude. I'm a fan. I like you. I, I love, I, like, I saw you open, I saw you back in 1988, 89. I'm a fan. Don't, there's plenty of room for everyone. Don't, and he's like, yeah, no. and we were cool ever since that. And then, so Pete's really cool, and we're about to, I think we're about to leave. Now, Pete's a diehard, um, vicious Yankee fan, okay? And we're, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're and we're leaving and all of a sudden at the time huge i mean like world series winner no hitter perfect game david wells is there and david comes up he's like hey bro and i just i go dave 
is my friend Pete. And he was just, Pete was like, boing. Your eyes like, bang. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you guys hung out That's all night. Right, it was a lot man. of fun. It was yes. a lot of fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all I that's that's all I remember. But yeah, that di- I thought the it. The only thing gone. I got to say about yeah. that scene before you. Go ahead. Oh, you can hear me. Oh, yeah. That scene is the only thing. Like two things is one, the guy who was the showrunner, you know, he had a specific way of thinking it should go. And do you remember one day after we're done rehearsing, everybody left. You and I stuck around, got a little relaxed, and then we went and we redid all of our scenes, and we thought we made them way funnier. And we're like, wait till we tell them on on Monday. And then we come in, we're like, listen, we're going to do this, and then Pete's going to bite an apple and toss it to me. Right? And we thought we thought we were saving the show. And yep. he, you could just see in his eyes, okay, we're going to have to spend all morning telling them none of this shit's happening. You know? And it was <laughs> like... Um, and the thing that annoyed me, I just want to say in that scene is a perfect example. Once that little kid told me it was dog food, yep. the guy who was the showrunner goes, eat the dog food again. And I go, so now I find out what I'm eating is dog food and I'm going to fucking eat it again. And he goes, <laughs> yeah, I, go, but I was like 23. I was excited to be there. <clears throat> now I go, let's get the fucking network exec in here and see if they want me to eat dog food. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching that, you go, all right, this guy's an idiot. Moving on. Who would do that? I can't stand that bullshit sitcom shit, you know? <laughs> I can't take it, man. Wait so, a minute. Yeah. Holy shit. I just remembered. Wasn't that the show where the director, like the third show, Third day of rehearsal, or something brought in the cast of whose line is it anyway? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, Ryan Stiles. Yeah, the tall guy. Yes. So this was so awkward. So awkward. So I'm just off the of Saturday Night Live. Pete's an up and coming comedian. Clearly, he's got shy. He's never even done TV, and this is first. I mean, I think he's crushing it. So with that said, and we're Dude, already. Your, your wife was Ali Wentworth, who was like on Seinfeld and has like done lots of uh, acting and movies. Then that guy, Terry Kaiser, who played Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's. There was some, everybody but me was like in shit. So it made no sense for this guy to be there. Like, train you. <laughs> well, here, what Pete's getting at is so we kind of finished the, the right. You just said the cast. I mean, you have. Ali Wentworth, who came from In Living Color, straight from the Wayans right, camp, right. The, br- the brilliant Wayans camp. That's a, that's a, a brilliant machine. You're, ping, there's another Wayans. There's another Wayans. Yeah. So yeah. she comes out of that. Jim Carrey's in that world. Yeah. When Wayans are S- born, they don't, they don't even say uh, it's a baby. They look at it and go, oh, look, it's a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> it's another star. Those another guys are star. I, I I give it to them. So with that said, the director goes, um, we have a special treat. And to kind of loosen up the cast that we have here, um, I have an idea. I'm going to bring in a real professional um, improv guy. And we're just gonna we're gonna do some uh, we're we're gonna have him come in here and kind of so we're all looking at each other and it's, it's what is the guy's name I I, I Ryan I'm sorry Styles. Ryan, Ryan Styles Ryan Styles Ryan Styles comes in and he goes uh, oh you could tell even he was yeah. going well, what do you why did you bring me here I'm with these guys are all coming from sketch shows and like what like what what's... even he even said hi to someone who's like, Oh hey, hey Ali, hey Terry, how you been? <laughs> right, didn't I see you last night? Yeah. He's, he's like, I work I worked with these people. <laughs> didn't I see you last night? <laughs> oh shit. 
Right. Oh my God, I forgot about all that. And then it didn't go. Dude, I, I don't know who the decision maker was, but I'll tell you what, about 10 years ago, I'm pitching a show. It's like my wife is born again. It was my life. I got my dad, blah, blah, blah. We make it all the way to, to all the network people. We go to Fox. We're sitting there. It was, uh, I want to say it was like an Asian guy and, and an older woman. Looked like a, she looked like a witch, man. I don't remember exactly. What it was. <laughs> I was just like, I got creepy. I got weird, creepy vibes from her. Um, and, and then all of a sudden the, the Asian guy goes, nobody's doing a show like this. We've been looking for this. This is the perfect place for it. He goes, I'm going to, we're going to call you. Let's talk in about an hour. Let's talk about an hour and let's get moving with this. So we looked at each other, like, boom, sold, sold the show in the room. Wow. As I'm leaving the room, the lady, the witch, <laughs> I determine what goes on the air. <laughs> oh, my little pretty. Oh, my little pretty. Oh. Would you like to see what I'm hiding below here? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, with that said, my agenda will be her. Um, with that said, she stops me and she goes, Remember me? No, but you know, it's really good seeing you again. She goes, I did your Fox pilot. And I went, which she was, it was you, it was this guy, P. Corielli. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. She goes, yeah, I did. I was there for that. And that's just how she said it. And Pete, for the life of me, I was like, this woman hates me i don't did something happen Whoa. not even a half hour later uh the agent goes what i i don't understand. what do you mean i don't understand we just what so he's doing that for like 10 minutes and he hangs up he goes they just passed i go oh wow so i for the life of me did we piss anyone off like i don't i don't remember yes. any of that I don't know the circus, no. but yes, yes. No, <laughs> never pissed anyone off. I remember that. <laughs> I, although I yes. do, I will say this: when I I ended up years later now writing on a Netflix show, where the man who was the showrunner of that show, your show, was now show running this show, uh, and you know, uh, that's all I'll say about that. But he when when you he brought you up and he said, uh, such a nice guy and a funny guy. But I just remembered uh, it was uh, every time we'd, I'd come in, I'd be like, uh-oh, what is, what is Jim changing now? What do I got to, you know, try and explain why it's not going to, that's not going to work now. But you were never like, it has to be my way, da-da-da. And you were always nice to executives. Maybe she just didn't like the show. I don't know. Whatever the reason. Maybe, did. maybe the fact that you don't even remember her, maybe she's like, I, you know, you never know with these people. You know, you got to be nice to everybody. Maybe you slept with her. I can, <laughs> I can assure you that, Gene. But, uh, but, that's, but isn't that how the network witch. goes? Maybe you slept with the witch. <laughs> but, that's, but that's how network goes, bro. Oh. Here, here we go. This network thinks they got a show that's going to be a hit, that's going to make them millions of dollars that everyone that watches their network's going to want to see. But one lady doesn't like the guy for some reason. So we're going to, that's why it's it, bullshit. I can't wait till they're even more insignificant than they already are. I mean, it's like these guys in the middle of the night, somebody cut their balls off. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Holy shit. So anyway, we get those networks, dummies. They, did their, they got what they, they got, what they got. They got what they got. Now all these streaming <laughs> services are blowing them away. And now movie stars are coming and doing shows because now you people aren't fucking them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, that yeah. was <laughs> Mike. No, Mike. When this is over, 
we gotta we gotta put that in a rant no, with some no, no, killer no. music. Let, let, let it just hide itself in the show, guy. All right. No, no, <laughs> let people just stumble <laughs> upon that gem. Thank you. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. True. Thank you. Oh my God, was that funny? Well, all right. yeah, we can go on and on about that stuff. Um, yeah, I could. What'd all you right. say? I could yell out my window. Right. Hi, Emerson. <laughs> What do you say we get to the next clip, Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> Segways are for fools. Oh, oh my God. That was the segue. I did the next clip, Johnny. Was- All right, go ahead, Mike. Play the next clip. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, this my God. One, this one I pulled uh, from a tape called Somerville Basement. Uh, I think this is before, like, you really became much of anything. Uh, Whoa. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna play this. Hold on a second. Here it's gonna be go. scary. Whoa! I know, I know I'm not in this one. Oh, oh, Jesus. Jesus. What's <laughs> like a open and extra belly button? Can't get rid of it. Wait a second. I haven't got rid of Lynn since I oh. two months old. <laughs> Let's zoom in on this problem. <laughs> zoom in on that lint. <laughs> Ew, <Sorry>. babe. That's <laughs> warm. <laughs> Fucking inhales the cookie. <laughs> Using all powers of snorting. <laughs> Holy shit, Joey, what happened to your belly button? It's got a lint. Oh, I just took some off. Camera work is issues. impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> some lint for you and some What lint am I wearing? Look at my glasses. What am I doing? Me not. Be, pick it up. My God, it's fingers with long pubic hair. <laughs> oh my God! Come on and zoom, us, zoom, okay. us, zoom, us, zoom. Okay, I've seen that. I see that. Okay, I see that. Let's tap out. No, you watch this. Let <laughs> <laughs> me out. Let me out. I had enough. You watch wow. that. <laughs> I think that's great, man. It's so uh, wild to see, like, like uh, just to put it in a nutshell, I, I don't like Saturday Night Live as far as I never had any desire to be a part of it. I never watched it growing up. I still don't really care for it. But, like, I know people love it. You were destined for it, man. That shit is like, you know, you've been doing sketches your whole life. Like, you know, you've always been a character guy. It's really cool to see you're doing Hey, Jim, you think that was when you were at uh, Nassau Community? <laughs> what gene you think that was when you were at Nassau community college no i know exactly when that was yeah. um that was <clears throat> d and i got engaged so this is 1992 and we got an apartment together and the reason why i know that's because i recognized the apartment and it was in the middle of nowhere in new jersey and i just got so that's just I was just about to get the Uptown Comedy Club. And so, yeah, so that's after you left Franklin Square then. Wow. No, before. Because they, well, you lived with us, me and Phil in the basement, and then you moved to Franklin Square. And then I thought you moved to Jersey. And a D came up. That's the reason why you moved to Franklin Square, right? I thought. No, no, no. We did Jersey first. <laughs> okay. After we got married. We went to Franklin Square. Okay. When I was on the Uptown Comedy Club, I was not in, uh, um, at first at Franklin Square. It started in, in um, Hillsborough, New Jersey. And we we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's where, like our parents lived close there or whatever, right? At that time? Yes. Did we go from the engagement party out there? It was like in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I, that's what I remember. Gene comes to our engagement party and he's just like, dude, what the fuck? You <laughs> fucking live in the middle of fucking just cows and shit. I almost ran out of gas. I almost ran out of gas. I'm like, there's no gas stations here. What the? <laughs> hey, fuck. There's some cow shit in the middle of my tank so I can get home. I don't know how the hell I get out of here. <laughs> D's family is holding this really, you know, uh, appropriate, uh, you know, people got button up shirts and he's like, I could fucking, I'm driving for nine miles. No fucking oh, fuck. Here's yeah, your, shit. I had to spend half of your gift to get here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <That's just laughs> and that, when, when you guys grew up in Nassau County, even if your car runs out of gas, you can roll it to a gas station. Yeah, you can walk. Any, any spot in Nassau in the whole county. Exactly. 
exactly. <laughs> this no, nah, that was that was some other shit. So that was New Jersey. Oh my god! You remember my goggles? I, my glasses wow. had to be about. <laughs> they were at least that thick. They were that thick. Um, oh wow! Well, uh, all I have to say about that clip is. If you didn't end up on Saturday Night Live, then that, <laughs> then that clip would have been weird. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, look at this guy sticking a cigar in his fucking belly button. And now, and now he's, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's an accountant or whatever, you know? But Pete, the fact that he made the SNL, that makes Pete, it not you, weird. You're, yeah. You know what? You couldn't have summed that up any better. And you're 100% correct. If, that, <laughs> if I didn't go in the entertainment world and that and that – that tape got out there. I think there'd be people knocking on the door tomorrow. Just saying, these parents, like, these parents would be like, "Have you seen Jimmy's tapes?" Yeah, tapes um, you, you didn't even <laughs> stop with the belly button. You know, it's like you, you then you switched it over to the finger and did a long cubic habit. I mean, you were doing a fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and so and still, I might have had a lot of view. I mean, yeah, um, Mike, <laughs> do you have another one? Yeah, uh, this is from, this is, uh, you're talking about the bugs in Florida, and this is at the comedy scene. Oh, shit. So let me play that for This you. might be Good open mic stuff. Okay. Good, man. Good, man. Hold on. Big first of all, stop. Here, stop. The highway, you know? Stop. First of all. Oh, wow. Look at what I'm <laughs> wearing. Oh, my gosh. Hot colors were in then, man. Did, did Pink was a man color then. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you got a pillow in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say we got to stay away from the pleated jeans at this time, particular time in life. Look at now. Here's the here's the crazy part. I am so confident and cocky that this is the look. <laughs> And this is who the star is. I was so cocky and co my hair. I'm not. I'm not lying to you. I thought I was. I thought every female was like, "This kid is just amazing." I thought like every female was like, "He's. I, he's gonna be the greatest." Look. I thought I was a hot tamale man. Look uh, at me. I'm pretty I mean, sure those are capizio pants. Oh Oof. man. That's almost a mullet, guy. It is, Pete. Let's not kid. It's a mullet. It's a mullet. It's, just, <laughs> it's in its infant stages, but it's a mullet. <laughs> it, it is definitely a mullet. All right, let's see if I can. we can muscle at least a, a minute. And feel free to stop and make fun of anything. All right. <laughs> you, know, you hit those bugs on the highway, they're dead. Boom. Florida, you hit these bugs, they come looking for you like three days later, right? I'm sitting there like three nice hand, nice work there. Sleep. I'm all fucked up. You know, Wait, hold on, stop. Excuse me. Oh. Well, the, nice, nice, nice. Uh, what do you say? Nice with work the with the microphone. You look like oh. you were comfortable. Yeah, this is definitely. I, that was smooth. I. <laughs> I think at this stage in the game, there were headliners that was like, listen, get to your physical bit immediately. And how you do that is you take the mic off and you want to take the stand and put it aside. And when you're done with the routine, you grab your microphone and you come back. And that's to let the audience know. It's hey, over. My routine <laughs> is done. And then you hope you get your applause. And I, I remember this stage and I actually, it, that stuff was actually helpful. All right, look at me. I really think the whole world is missing a superstar when I'm doing this right here. This, this is a great this, bit, though. I remember this bit. Yeah, I do good. remember this. I do yeah, remember this. Bit. Go ahead. Yeah, Jenny Clark, what do you mean? You fucked up my brother pretty bad. You want to come outside, please? <laughs> Charlie, come here. Is this the guy? <laughs> I can't. 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 <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> this just shows you when I got Saturday Night Live, I literally I, I didn't have professional characters. I didn't have I, I I I could do impressions, but I didn't study people. Do you remember what you did for SNL yes. as far as your audition? 
What was it? Um, I did the alcohol in the stomach bit. I did, it. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a character. Um, I called him the shut up guy. Shut up. Um, shut up guy. Mm-hmm. And he, he was probably my best character that never made it to air or my favorite character. But I was running out of, I was starting to get desperate and I pitched this routine to do on the steel. Oh, we lost him. Oh, man. He does that from time to time. He'll just sit there and he'll, just he'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, pulls a Houdini and then just shows up. All right, so Pete, we can go over this uniform now <laughs> while he's not here and he can't hear us. <laughs> he definitely, the waistline is a little too high. Shirt tucked in. That was the way style. I guess we're going to have to deal with that. Hey. Yeah. That was, <laughs> He's back. That was weird. My phone just, it just died. It just stopped. It was weird. Um, That's deep pop- state, bro. Deep state. See? Keep talking about Hollywood. Keep talking about it. See? <laughs> they got me trapped. It's, it's going down. Um, <clears throat> hey, we know you mentioned it when you didn't mention names and I'm just saying we're on. We're not going to take you out yet, but yeah, we know you're worth. We know you. We know you have an audience as big as opening the window and yelling out. <laughs> Trust me, Pete. No, well, you're not carrying the Pete Corielli audience uh, yet, uh, but uh, you're getting there. Yeah, yeah. You better be careful, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, that is the funny dude. I'm going to be saying that all day, all day. I'm going to say. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Guy, I, I can I can have a bigger audience open the window than that guy gets it. Um, All right, so you were in the middle of t- saying you pitched I, that bit, and it was to Steve Forbes, and it made it to air. And to this day, I think it's a, one of the dumbest <clears throat> sketches, but I can't believe they made it out of that. But anyway, um, oh wow! So anyway, I thought you know it's funny. I was going to. Um, I'm going to have to get some other stuff that we can really make fun of and really tear apart. I didn't, I, I mean, God, my shirt, I even have it tucked in. (laughs) Yeah. I already dealt with that one. You were gone. Oh, you did? What were you saying while I was off? I said, you know, the waistline's a little too high. The shirt's tucked in. But that was the style back then. Everybody tucked in with the belt. You You probably have a really thin belt. I can't see in here. We can't blow it up. But it's probably a real skinny belt. It was just the style then. Yeah. It's 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 probably straight out of Chess King. Yeah. The only thing that we're really missing from this whole outfit, that shirt should have a silk shirt on top of it, halfway, you know, opened up. And then that would have been totally 90s. We'll, you know. we'll, we'll, we'll have, <clears throat> I'm sure we have plenty of that. Maybe um, I could make hook it up in post. Maybe we can. Is that the hook. last, is, is that the last clip? I think so. Mike, that's what we got today. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you. I, I have a, a, a whole folder full of clips. Come on. Let's oh, do one other. Let's do one other uh, unrehearsed. Uh, Spin the wheel. <laughs> All right, last one, last one, last one. Last one. All right, I don't this know This one, what I'm um, at here. this one, you were on Bay TV. Uh, oh God. You were with Daryl Hammond. Uh, I guess you guys had just started SNL, and uh, there was some guy okay. in there from some catalog company selling stuff, and there was this item in particular that I guess you just had to play with, and you'll find out what it is towards the end of the clip. Or Sunset City, or the City of Beaches. Dale, how? I'm sorry. <laughs> you notice? Don't be sorry, Dale. It's pretty hard to damage this show. You know, I mean, it's, it really is. But if you notice, the trivia callers are getting completely out of control. They're taking over. I say we start booking them. Uh, I think you should. Yeah, I think he's well. Okay. Uh, what's the answer to the question, Dale? The city of Beaches. City of Beaches. Not. We have from Casino, as a matter of fact, here, uh, Joe Pesci and, and Robert De Niro. Oh, God. Who, you guys just spent some time in Alameda, didn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, God. we spent a little time in Alameda. Alameda is a place where, uh, oh, God. let's say, uh, me and Bobby here, we would uh, <laughs> visit our relatives. Oh, God. A lot of what? relatives there, right? Nice. A lot of friends. And- <laughs> <laughs> a couple of relatives. Got a few. You know, relatives. Got a few. <laughs> we got a few. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dan. Bro, this is we'll the you all worst. Meet Thank you for your patience, oh. Tony. Thing that wasn't do. even the clip. I had it all chopped up. I don't know where the hell the pe- this It doesn't is matter. It. Don't even worry about it. This is, oh, this? This oh. right well, here. Before anyone goes, <laughs> I'm already looking at how uncomfortable I am, my body language. See, when, you, when you're starting out and you're still trying to make it, you're still trying to prove yourself, and, and, and you're still in that position where you go, <clears throat> okay. I normally don't try to be funny in these scenarios, but now I guess I have to, and I got to sell myself. It's such a, it's such an awkward place to be, and I'm looking at the, the, my body language with Daryl Hammond. The two of us are so uncomfortable, and we're looking at each other, going, "Oh my God, this is so. What are we doing? You really think we're gonna sell two more tickets to the Improv at Irvine tonight, or <laughs> wherever, wherever the hell we're playing? This one's and, gonna put us over the top. <laughs> and, and what drives me nuts more is how many radio shows and how many what they they just go. So we got Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro, and like it would be great if you do this and this. And you're going, oh my god, here we. It's like 6.30 in the morning. And you're like, <clears throat> hey, and you know it's bombing because they're giving you nothing. It's just, ah, oh, it's the, it's the most uncomfortable. I don't even do press anymore. I don't even do press anymore. Like, I, Pete, would you agree? You reach a stage where you know as an entertainer, you're trying to make it. You're trying too hard. You reach a stage where you go, you know what? I'm going to compare it to baseball. I can't hit sliders. I can't hit outside pitches. I can't hit fastballs. So all I met, but if you give me a curveball, I'm going to put it on the upper deck. And that's the way the stand-up is now. It's like, I don't touch it unless I'm swinging at curveballs. And that's <laughs> all I'm... Bang! And, right. I, and that's my and I don't care if people go, he doesn't know how to hit a fastball. No, I no. don't. He doesn't know how to, but he's not clever, so he's not like, no, I'm not. However, those curveballs are still flying into the bay, oh. and I'm appealing to the people that go, Did you see how far that? But this reminds me of me just swinging at high and outside, <laughs> low, uh, in the dirt. There goes a pitch in the dirt. Oh, Brewer and Daryl swing at it on strike three with the bases loaded. It is so embarrassing to look at. But <laughs> you were young. Same, but at the yeah, same you have time, to go through that, though. You know, you had to go through that. You got to go through that humiliation. It's right. So, so you got to find your comfort that. zone. Yeah. You know. Yeah, All right. So what? what all this now without going through that then. I hope there's young comedians, young entertainers that just see the the horroring, the horroring <laughs> you have to do. The horror. Up. You got to put the dress on. And just oh, where's the couch? Let's do this. Yeah. Man, it is hard. Let's so uh, let's have a little entertainment. Well, let's make fun of them. <laughs> the carnival's in town. <laughs> All right, what's the next part? I'm afraid to watch this. All right, so this this is what I wanted to show you. So you see this this guy's got this yeah, thing on his face up? over there. So yeah, you're gonna yeah. find out what it is. Roxanne. Yeah. Don't put it there. Oh, now she tells me. Okay, good. <laughs> What's uh, next? Second, what do we second have? Second product. Also, maybe not. What is that? That's for your dick. Tongue this is uh, also just a more elaborate one. It's a, that's a woman, so she could pee in a urinal, urinal, a male's urinal. urinal. That's what that is. We say. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Stand by your man. Uh, I'm a uh, camping Where's my trip. camera? Tickle the back is really yeah. bad. Is anyone looking? <laughs> 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 oh my God. We're trying. Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Where's my urinary director? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I forgot I sh- to take my panties off. <laughs> He's a squirmy rooter. <laughs> Would that be it's a squirt? It roots. It even lubricates itself. <laughs> Oh my God! Sorry. You put it on. <laughs> I knew it. He put it on his face. <laughs> it was only once used. Well, see, I, I, I wow. that just shows. That was a funny bit. 
Well, the first thing I saw was, oh, wow, I get to do an elephant. This is where I show off my elephant noise skills. <laughs> That's all I saw. I said, I'm going to sell tickets right now because I can make an elephant noise out of this. <laughs> Don't worry, Darren. Oh my God, that's freaking hilarious. So, great. Anyway, let's wrap it up. I don't want to bore you guys. Hey, Pete. Yeah, man. Good hanging. Pete does um, a podcast with Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete's doing dates. They're selling out a lot. So, if you go on Pete Corielli's website, don't hesitate for any seats because it's going to sell out if it isn't already sold out. So, don't waste any time. I'm, and I'm not trying to sell, I'm just being dead honest with you. And if and of course check him out on uh, Pete. What is the name of that? It's the Pete, Pete and Sebastian Show. <clears throat> the Pete and Sebastian Show. And um, I love you, man. I always love seeing Same you. Same here, bro. You're the best, Jimbo. No, you are, man. I love you like a brother. Be I safe. love you, brother. Love and you. Gene, <clears throat> we will talk to you soon. Definitely. Um, he, so there was some nostalgia for you. Um, it was just good, you know. Gene is there's when you guys get to know Gene. I think he, I think hands down, he may be one of the funniest human beings ever made me laugh. When I go on the road, um, and I start really, you know, I go through tons. Of the, I don't look to movies to make me laugh. I don't look to comedians to make me laugh. I always look to Gene. And I always, Gene's been uh, one of those uh, people in my life that, is, that, is, that has meant a lot to me, him, Phil, and Pete. So I loved having today. Those are very important people in my life. We're like, bro we're brothers. We're more than just who we are. And follow Pete Corielli. See what he's up to. He's, um, he's a very funny comedian. And I hope you go check him out at the Paramount. And I wish you guys best. I hope you liked this episode. We showed some old stuff, an old pilot from, I don't even remember what, it probably like 1998, 99, something like that with me, P. P Corielli. We showed some horrifying basement footage of me trying to be funny. Horrifying. And just like P. Corielli said, if I didn't go in the entertainment world and that video surfaced now, eh, it's a little creepy. And then... The last one, just watching, watching me try so hard with another comedian. Just, uh, I love watching that stuff. I hope you appreciate it. I wish you the best. All the Patreon, we got a lot of footage coming up for you. And keep your eye out. I'm going to announce when the next live show is, okay? Um, it's going to be probably from Florida. I'm not sure which room. I'm kind of zoning in on McCurdy's in Sarasota, which is an explosive room for me. So that may be the next live appearance. If you're not on Patreon, think about it. It's, um, there's different tiers. I do a live concert once a month. You get my last comedy special that I filmed in August. You get all uh, a whole different podcast where you, the Patreon member, do the podcasting. I take your questions and we podcast for an hour and air it. And of course, we have first dibs here at the Bruniverse. So I wish you all, Mike, good to see you. Thanks for all your hard work and everything you do for me. I really appreciate it. And to Pete Corielli and Gene Williamson and everyone out there, I hope you have so much love and laughter. All the best to you. See you next time on the Bruniverse. Broadway play in three years. Six foot safe. You look great, Grandpa. Take out your cameras for selfies, because Jim won his head sticking out of the edge of the cannon. Oh my God, I love these. <laughs> Sexist, racist, rights, rights, gay rights, people rights, human rights. For what you are about to receive. And may you all have love and laughter in this crazy lifetime we're living in.